to me, this is more than a video game. It's a means to talk about my son. It's kind of like a diary. My name is David Osset. I'm from New York. Um, I co-directed Thank You For Playing with my partner Malika Zuhali Worrell, uh, which is about a man named Ryan Green, who's an independent video game developer who's making a video game about his son's terminal cancer. I, uh, it always depends on the project I'm working on for me. Uh, it's, it's very contingent on what kind of story it's going to be. And what I'll typically do is whatever story is interesting to me that I want to start making, I'll just find reference for that style. Um, in this particular case, with Thank You For Playing, um, I knew that there would be this focus on technology and art. Um, and also, kind of a, it's, it's also a meditation on the idea of documentation and right. how we approach death, how we approach grieving. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it was important for me to see how the idea of grief has been tackled in film before. What surprised me was that a game could deal with uh, tragedies of this sort or with emotions of mm -hmm. this sort. The fact that a game could address this very human, very relatable thing of, of death or of, of, of cancer or of uh, fear of loss or fear of, of grief. Uh, the fact that a game could approach that uh, not just in general, but in an incredibly artful way, right, right. incredibly impactful way, and in a way that could engender empathy among strangers. Right, that right. was surprising to me. The fact that a game would essentially, what we realized was that people, I mean, we, we know that, we all know that people have been making art about their pain for, right. for years, yeah. personal stories. Um, but what a game does that's different from a book or a movie or a painting right. or a play is that it allows the audience to actually actively engage with the story. Right. You have agency. You can be in the room with Ryan, the, right. the main character of Thank You For Playing, uh, um, and, and you can hold Joel, you know, his son, right, yeah. and you can experience Joel the way that he experienced Joel, as much as he's able to let you within the medium. Right. And also it's not a world of hyper-realism the way a film would attempt to be. There's this magical realism world. Right. The, the, the characters in the game, for example, example are low polygon count right, right. so there's no discernible faces which allows you subconsciously as the audience or as the player right. more accurately to superimpose whatever you want to onto those faces it really helps you connect with what the medium is trying to connect you with I read about that dragon cancer on a website called kill screen daily which okay. is a sort of art focused gaming news website okay. um, that a friend of mine had sent me and I wasn't a reader of it but on the very first page when I went to it one day there was this two sentence description right. of what Ryan, it wasn't even an article it was just the two sentence really just right that. well yeah it was just like a write-up like of like a weekly news roundup thing oh, and it was a two sentence thing and I read that two sentences and it looked like a film festival synopsis to me right, it looked right. like a movie synopsis right. for a movie that hadn't been made yet and within those two sentences of you know Ryan is making this video game about his son a lot of worlds were in that to me. A lot of ideas about what that game would look like. What would the emotional experience of making that game look right. like? What are the what's the family going through making this right. game? How are they making this game? Right. You know, how much reality is going into it versus how much fiction? So all those things come, all these things combined, and uh, and so that from that I, I I thought about it for a while because I had just finished um, a feature documentary and I was tired. Yeah. Uh, and my partner Malika had also done the same, and we were both tired. Um, but we but we uh, reached out to Ryan and, and went out for a shoot, thinking we'd made a, a short film. Right, right. Um, and then it became a feature. It turned into a yeah. Huge, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Another huge, yeah, movie. That was a big challenge, and it was an interesting challenge. It was an exciting challenge because. The film is not is about a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, in the same breath as it being as the film is about uh, like the idea of of how we access grief in the Western world. It's also yeah. about the construction of a video game. It's also about the relationship between a mother and a, and a father. Yeah. It's also about a relationship between a father and a son. Yeah. And so there's a lot of threads that we're trying to balance. Um, and I think the main thing we had to always keep in mind was that the the, the arc was going to be essentially tied to the creation of this game oh, and right, right. also mirroring Joel's health, which we chronicled throughout the 14 months that we filmed with the family. Right. 
So. Well, it's funny because insert yourself implies that we are doing something uh, to an unwilling party. Okay. <laughs> you know? Uh, no, it's totally <laughs> fine. And no, that's a totally, but that's, that's exactly the point though, right, right. is that I don't think anyone wants, to, I don't think anyone's going to agree to be in a documentary film unless there's something they want to say. Right, right. Um, something that they feel as though they can share more so by having a camera mm -hmm. on them. And uh, the fact that Ryan and Amy and, and Josh Larson, the co-creator of That Dragon Cancer, were making this game to me, before I even met them, spoke volumes about how th that they wanted to communicate their experience right. in a certain degree. Um, and I'm sure that many families who go through this experience would want the same opportunity to be able to feel like they're not alone, mm -hmm. to be able to communicate this. Right. So in terms of us uh, engaging with them and, and being part of their lives for this period of time, mm -hmm. It was a a matter of the fact that that, that we were able to, to kind of amplify them a little bit uh, subconsciously, but also uh, we we became very close. I mean, we yeah. became uh, very close with them, and we um, we we really uh, grew to care about them, and and uh, we all kind of were in service of the same story, which right, was right. documenting Joel. There. Don't listen. Don't listen. Don't listen. He was not in the wind. He was not in the earthquake. He was not in the fire. He was here in a gentle whisper. Why have you come? I just want him to feel better. I don't want it to come back. One thing that was helpful for us with Thank You For Playing was that since we wanted to start making it as a short film mm -hmm. and it only kept growing from there, we had to essentially, as we decided the film would be longer and longer, we had to reevaluate why. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of filmmakers don't do that sometimes. And I know that I haven't done that in the past for films I've worked on. Mm -hmm. um, but oftentimes you start thinking you're gonna make an 80 minute documentary, right? right. Um, and there's five acts or there's three acts, right. but you don't know necessarily what they are all the time. Mm -hmm. With us, with this film, with Thank You For Playing, which started as 10 minutes and then it was 22 and then it was 38 <laughs> and then it was 52 and then it was 80. And as we continue to expand the scope of the film, we had to consistently reevaluate what constitutes this length, what constitutes a story here? Right. What are we going to be able to say in the first 20 minutes mm -hmm. And how are we going to be able to move the audience forward in the next 20 minutes? So it was kind of a, a, a linear path of just trying to figure out how we can tell this story. And it was always just predicated on us after every shoot thinking about what we had and storyboarding it. You know, you put a board oh, up yeah. and you and you put the postcards up and you figure out what your scenes are and you figure out what begins and ends the story you're trying to tell. Do you see that as kind of so much of the game and that kind of you're taking um, even through film, like you're taking like this this really messy uh, uh, personal experience, and then you're trying to craft a particular narrative out of it. Mm -hmm. and that's, is that kind of what he's doing in, in the game as well? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a big similarity between what he's doing and what any filmmaker would be doing. Right, you right. know, he's trying to tell a nonfiction story in video game form. It's essentially an interactive documentary. You can call it a game. You can call it anything you want. But mm -hmm. essentially, what he was doing was taking experiences from his life and taking the thoughts that he had, that he'd written down, and taking uh, his family, and being able to combine all these pieces into a digestible story. Right. Um, it was funny, at a Q&A recently, um, someone asked Ryan um, how long the, the game would be, and he, he said, about the length of a film. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's, it's Ryan always wanted to make films. Uh, oh, right, he, yeah, he's an uh, going to acting. Yeah, he wanted to yeah. go into acting, and, and, and Amy and Ryan also really, like, they loved acting, and they loved filmmaking, and they loved movies. One of the first things we bonded over was Terrence Malick. And, oh, no way. And there's, like, a couple of shots in the video game that are kind of evocative of Tree of Life yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's just about being an artist. It's just about right. how you tell any story. You have to think about how you're going to advance it. And, and what Ryan's doing is very similar to what we were doing. We were just doing it in a different medium than him. Right, exactly. And a, and a, a medium that's a bit more, uh, that people are a bit more used to interacting with. Right, right. Uh, and, yeah, yeah, it seems like, like these games, it's like using this way is kind of on the forefront of something. It's kind of at this vanguard, and these, these games exist, they're newer. The thing is, is that 
it's it's only been about the last 10 years when this technology to make these sorts of video games with a small studio or a small team right. was really available, right. which is not terribly different from independent documentary filmmaking. Right. I mean, 10 years ago when like the PD-150 and the DVX-100 cameras right. came out, it was the first time you could really like go out and do something mm -hmm. for cheap. Um, that's certainly the way I got into documentary right. filmmaking. Um, and so now you're in a stage where you are able to use the video game medium to tell these really remarkable personal stories or empathetic stories. And that's a really special thing. It's just a matter of the fact that currently and since its inception, the, per the perception of the video game world has been that of you know like the zit face teen at home. Right, right. And that's not the case anymore. There's just as many female video game players as, as male video game players. The median age isn't teenage anymore. It's sure. 20s and 30s and 40s. Everyone from every age has a mobile game at this yeah, point. Right, right. So what are games? They're not just Pac-Man anymore. They're much more complex, and therefore our understanding of what they are is going to be changing a lot in the next five years. This is kind of the first example of what a game can be that maybe people have heard about, but this has been going on for a while. They did several times, actually. There was a couple times, that, for example, um, Ryan uh, has made a lot of scenes uh, in the game that have to do with water. And we were filming out with him, and, uh, and he was uh, doing some reference uh, work in the, in the swimming pool. And he had a GoPro, and uh, we gave it to him. We gave him the GoPro and said, you film this, and you can use the, it as reference to animate this underwater scenes, and we'll use the footage in our in our film this to show scene. you making right. these scenes. Um, because of the presence of the camera, right. that GoPro, that became a scene. Right. And because of our presence there with a the camera in the first place, the film became a film. Right. So I think uh, there's a lot of meta components to Thank You For Playing, and one of which is just that it's kind of sometimes a documentary about documentation. And right. how, do we, how do we document ourselves? What is our need to document ourselves? Mm -hmm. And the presence of a camera, the presence of a witness. Um, mm -hmm. it's, a right. major, it's a major thing. Uh, the audience reaction has been really remarkable. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's typically um, a very it's it's a uh, it's it's difficult to get people to go um, to go down these these emotional roads. Yeah. Um, and we've been really honored by the response that we've been getting from people who are just so grateful to be able to meet Ryan um, and Josh, the co-creator of the game, mm -hmm. who were here up in Toronto for the last two screenings yeah, we had. And uh, just the fact that people feel like they've been engaged in this story, that they feel like they know Joel, that they love the family, uh, that's what Ryan always wanted. And the fact that we can help facilitate that, yeah. to be able to help share Joel with the world in that way is really special. Well, that's, that's fantastic. I can't think of a better service for a film <laughs> mm. to, to be in. Uh, thank you, David, for taking the time. To thank you so us. much. Yeah. My pleasure. Hi everyone, hope you enjoyed that interview. If you want to see some more of my interviews with the filmmakers here at Hot Docs, why don't you go ahead and click right here for the playlist. And if you're not sick of my face, why don't you go ahead and click right here to become a subscriber. That way you can keep up to date on all of our movie content from features to interviews. This is Zach Fanny for Cinema Sophistry and VGS on the Edge.